Good morning, Monat. Good morning, Yu Chen. Can you confirm that you can hear me and you can see my screen? Thank you, Monat. Thank you, Yu Chen. Uh, are there any questions? Anything? Uh, today is week 12, week 12. Uh, so last week we did our test two, okay? Um, so in week 12, we are going to study chapter 14, mortgage, okay? So I'm just going to present the agenda. So this is week 12. Um, week 12 will cover chapter 14, okay, the whole chapter, mortgage calculations. Okay. Um, and remember this week, Friday, we have 1% quiz, total quiz is 10%. Yeah. And the pre-recorded lecture, pre-recorded lecture is, I will post it here, so chapter 14, I pre-recorded three sessions of those lectures. Okay, so I'm going to send this to your email as well. Okay, this is our week 12. For all pre-recorded lecture, if you can go to the lecture recordings, you see all the lecture recordings, all the chapters listed on the course outline. Okay, so any questions? So those are the pre-recorded lectures. Any questions? Let me check. Hello, Jonah, welcome. Okay, as usual, I will go to questions related to quiz this week. I encourage you to follow my steps. So make sure you have your calculator ready so that you can follow my steps. So this week, chapter 14, mortgage calculation. Okay, mortgage calculation. Okay, so let's go dive in to the question. Just want to adjust my computer so that I can also see your chat message. So, uh, will we have one more test? Juna, yes. We will have one more test that will be in week uh, 15. Today is week 12. We do chapter 14. Next week, we do chapter 16. Okay. The week after next, we will do the review, and then week 15, our last test. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you in advance for your participation. I appreciate. 
I encourage you to stop me at any time to ask any questions. You can ask questions by typing your message on the chat area, or you can unmute yourself, directly speak up. Okay, let's do question one. Question one. A loan of 8,000 is repaid by payment of 606 at the end of uh, every month. Payment every month means PY equal to 12. Interest is compounded monthly. So CY equal to 12. Question one. How many payments are required to repay the debt? Okay. How many payments are required? So for question A, you enter set up PYCY and then the present value is 8,000 PMT negative 606 IY 12 FV 0. You enter those four numbers and then you compute N. Okay, so may, remember before you enter those numbers, make sure your computer, your calculator is at the end mode because it is at the end Okay, if you have began switch to end by quick second begin, second set, second quit. Okay. So I'm going to do it on my calculator. So first set PY, oh, I pull out my calculator here. Oops. Um, I will double check my online computer, okay? Oops. Um, why I couldn't find my E drive? Um, my online computer for whatever reason didn't show up. So usually I should have, so this PC. Oh, I have to uh, plug in my power in order to enable, yeah. Okay, now I got my calculator here. Try to move over here.
All right, you ready? So, uh, make sure it is end mod, and then always start by second quit to clear any previous entries. And then second py 12 enter. Down arrow key, you have a cy 12 enter. Second quit. Now enter 8000 as pv. Six hundred oh six negative PMT twelve IY zero FV final step compute N so you got fourteen point two three if you have four decimal places, the answer should be 14.2285. Okay. So that is term N. I will use this opportunity to change my decimal places. Okay. So second quit. To change decimal places from two to four, you do this. Second format, you have DEC, stand for decimal. So type in number four. Quick enter. Then second quit, you have four decimal. This time, if I compute N, I got 14.2285. Okay. Thank you, Juna. Congratulations. You also got the correct number. Okay, that is question A. Question B, because the number of payment we got 14.2285, so from payment one to payment 14, we pay 606 each month, but for the last period, it is not it is just 0 0.2285 months, okay? Just 0 0.2285 months. So the payment is not 606, should be smaller than 606. The question asks you, what is that final payment with the period 0 0.2285? Okay, um, so I am going to open a Word document to explain how do you calculate the final payment. Okay, uh, I'm going to blank document. Not here. Okay, I'm going to open up our Word document. So to calculate final payment, there are two methods. Okay. So first I will introduce method one. First I will introduce method one. I'll try to make original questions available. Okay. Method one is prospective. Prospective method. So in this method, you need to calculate the present value at the end of period 14. Okay, so this method calculate the PV at the end of 14th month. Okay, so what is the present value? 
at the end of the 14th month. Okay. Um, remember the last payment is a period is 0 0.88, 0 0.2285. So N equal to 0 0.2285. That is N. And uh, PMT equal to negative 606. FV is a zero. RUI um, is a 12. Oops. So do you have four numbers? Did you see four numbers? OK, you can calculate the PV once you have these four numbers. So punching these four numbers on your calculator. And then you compute PV. OK, you'll get the result. So I'm going to use my calculator. Because my calculator, I already have PMT negative 0 0.06. So I, as a matter of fact, I just need to enter term N, then press compute PV. Okay, so right now term N is 14.2285. I want term N 0 0.2285. So minus 14, I get 0 0.2285. And this is my term n. Then compute PV. So I got 137.6564. Okay. So I got 137.65. On safe side, you need to enter all four numbers here. The reason I just enter one number, 0 0.82285, is that I already have those numbers entered in the calculator. But on safe side, I will suggest you enter all these four numbers, then compute PV. Okay. So once you compute this PV, remember this $137 is the present value at the last payment, the beginning point of last uh, period, because there is a time value of money interest involved. So you have to use this number, okay, this number, times one plus I to get final payment. So 137.6564 times I, I is 12%. When you use formula, you need to have percentage. And this 12% compounded monthly, you have to divide it by 12. Okay. And the final result, you would get 139.03. Okay. So this method is a prospective, prospective method. Any questions? Um, this is prospective. Uh, and then the second method is retrospective, method two. In retros, 
perspective method. The concept is this. I give you concept, okay? Uh, if I borrow ten dollars from you, I paid four dollar back. How much I own you? If I give you this question, can anyone answer this question? I borrowed ten dollars. I paid back four dollars. So how much I own you? Correct, six dollar. Thank you, Juna. Thank you, Monat. Okay. So how did you get six? You use ten dollar minus four dollar. You get six dollar. That's correct. This is the method behind retrospective so in retrospective um try to get multiple windows so this is my screen and here okay great in retrospective method you use a future value future value at the end of uh, 14th payment minus future value of the annuity. Okay, so the future value, uh, I will specify, you use future value for, for what? Remember, initially you have 8,000. What is the future value at the end of 14? Use this future value, it's like $10 minus the future value of the annuity. You already paid like $4. The result, the result would be the value you owned and then times interest. Okay, so this is the idea. And to calculate the future value of 8,000 at the end of 14, let's do this calculation. Okay. You just need to enter four numbers. So use your calculator. Where's my calculator? So this question is complicated. I strongly suggest you redo this question after this lecture. So I'm going to second quit what i'm going to do i'm going to do what is the future value at the end of 14 payments using calculator okay the formula is here you can use formula eight thousand times one plus one percent raised to power 14. remember when you use formula you need to use 12 percent divided by 12 to get interest. So this is the formula I already presented here. Now I will use formula, use calculator to calculate future value for $8,000 at the end of 14th payment. Okay, so double check PY is 12, CY is 12, and then 14, is a term n, okay? 12 is interest i, y, okay? 8,000 is a present value p, v, zero is p, m, t. Compute f, v, you get this number. $9,195.79, the number is here. You get this number. This number is also the result of this formula here. Okay, so we did calculate a method 
to calculate future value for 8,000 at the end of 14. Next, calculate future value of the annuity over 14 payment period. Future value of the annuity. Okay, so I go to second quit. Okay. And remember, you need to enter four numbers. But since some numbers already entered to calculate the future value of the annuity, uh, I will just need to, I already entered the term N interest I. So now I need to enter zero is PV. Okay. Uh, zero is PV 606. That is negative PMT. And then compute future value. So I got $9,058.14. So it is this number here. And this number is also the result of future value formula for annuity, this part, future value for annuity, okay? And then you do subtraction, like you do subtraction $10 minus $4 equal to $6. So you do subtraction and you will get $137.65. Okay, and once you got 137.65 cents, this number need to multiply one plus I. So 137.65 times 1.01. The final result you get 139.03. So this is second method. Uh, retrospective method. Okay, retrospective method. So I will try to copy this. Maybe have some space here to see if I can paste it here. Okay, no, 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 stop. Why oh, you can't stop? That's too bad. Okay, I don't need that long. All right, so any questions? The difficult part is question B, final payment. Uh, remember, I also pre-recorded the lecture. If you go over this on the chart area, chapter 14, I have three lessons, three sections. You need to go over by yourself. Okay. Um, So this is a final payment. Any questions? Okay, let's do question two. Question two. Uh, 95,000 mortgage. is to be repaid over a 10-year period by monthly payment, rounded up to the next higher $100. Interest is 4.5%, compounded semi-annually. Question A, determine the number of rounded payments required to repay the mortgage. So question two, 
और दो सादा So let's do question two. Uh, question, in question A, uh, this payment, monthly payment means PY equal to 12, monthly payment, 4.5% compounded semi-annually means CY equal to two. So first of all, set up your computer. Second quit, second PY, oops. second PY, PY is 12, enter, down arrow key, you have CY, CY is 2, enter, second quit, Okay. And now enter nine ninety-five thousand. This is the PV present value. Okay. Uh, present value interest four point five. That is I, Y. Future value is zero. This loan is repaid over 10 year period. So term on 120 is a term on. So finally, compute PMT. I got $982.66. Okay, so for question A, term N equal to 120. So compute PMT. Okay. Once you get this number, the question asks you, Payments round up to the nearest higher 100. So if you round to nearest higher 100, the result of $982 becomes $1,000. So each month, you should pay $1,000. I pause for a moment to see if you have questions for part A. Okay, any questions? So question B, determine the size of the last payment. Determine the size of last payment. Uh, in order to determine the size of last payment, we want to calculate what is the term N when each month you pay $1,000. So we need to do calculation for term N. What weighs my mouse? Okay. So, okay. So we need to calculate um, term N when we have a payment $1,000 as PMT. So we enter 1000 negative PMT, and then we compute N. The result is 117.3918. Okay. 
here. So when you have a PMT 1000 term N equal to 117.3918. Okay. Okay, now remember we have two methods for final payment. Uh, this time I will just pick um, prospective method, prospective method. Remember in, so I will maybe draw a diagram here. So total payment we need, so this is payment one, payment two, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have 117 point something. Okay, this is 117. This is a, uh, 0 0.3918. So we want to find what is the last payment this period. Okay. So to do that, we found the present value at the end of period 117. 117, that is the prospective method. And for this present value, this period N equal to 0 0.3918, okay, if you have, initially I have six decimals, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, this is term N, so the question becomes, if you have term N, 0 0.391841, what is the PV? Okay, so let's do this. So second quit, second quit. If you have a zero, zero point three nine, zero point three nine one eight. Okay, if you have this number as a term n. $1,000 as PMT. Zero is FV. Interest is 4.5. Calculate present value. Okay. And I got $390.79. Okay. If you have more decimal places, if you use six decimal places, you may get 390.83086. Okay. So this number, remember in this diagram, it is the present value at the beginning at the end of uh, period 117, okay? And you have this time period, time value, okay? So you have to times the interest, okay? Use 390 times one plus interest. Okay. And how do you calculate the interest? And in this situation, we have a PY not equal to CY. PY not equal to CY. When PY not equal to CY, you need to calculate equivalent rate of payment P. Equivalent rate of payment P. That equal to one plus I raised to power CY over PY minus one equal one plus 4.5 percent divided by two because 4.5 percent compounded semi annually. Okay, and raised to power CY over PY, CY is two. 
py is 12 minus 1. So you get equivalent rate per payment period 0 0.00372. Okay, 0 0.00372. And again, plug in this 0 0.00372 into this formula. Remember, we got 390. So 390 times 1 plus P. The final result would be $392.28. Okay. Any questions? All right. Uh, the same question. Um, this is a, you can use a calculator, second amortization function. Okay. So I'm um, going to do question B using second amortization function to do question B. Okay. So I will leave a regional question open here. And to do that, make sure you have PY equal to 12, CY equal to 2. Okay. Uh, remember, initially we calculated a uh, number of payment is um, 117 point something, point 0.3918. So we consider it is a 118 term N, IY 4.5, PV 95,000, PMT negative 1,000, FV0. So enter all these five numbers, five numbers. I will do it now. What I am doing now, I am introducing amortization on the calculator. So to begin with, double check PY is 12. CY is 2. And now, second quiz, enter 118, that is term N, 4.5, IY, 95,000, PV, 1,000, negative PMT, zero FV. So I have just entered these five numbers from here to here. After that, um, you click second I'm out. This button here, second I'm out and you're given P1 means payment period one, <clears throat> but I am not interested in the first payment. I am interested in last payment. So I will enter 118 as P1, then click down arrow key, P2. I also enter 118, enter. After that, <clears throat> you click down arrow key. You have this um, balance. Um, this number is not right. The second amortize and balance. Principal interest. Uh, I need to double check my settings, okay? <clears throat> no. I need to double check my, because the number, the balance should be 
negative six hundred or seven dollar. So second py, py is twelve, cy is two. Second quit. Um, One hundred oh eight that is n four point five interest present value present value ninety five thousand present value PMT one thousand PMT zero is FV then second AMT type in 118 enter down arrow key 118 um, enter okay this time it is correct so I got balance negative six hundred oh seven dollar six hundred oh seven if the result is negative, means there is an overpayment. There is an overpayment. So you use 1,000 minus 607, you get $392. Uh, Direct answer, $392. OK. So that is a calculator, second amortization. OK. If you use period 117, if you type in P1 117, P2 117, the balance would be 390. And you have to use 390 times one plus periodic interest to get $392. OK, so any questions? Um, this chapter, chapter 14, is uh, so far the most challenging chapter so far. Um, like anything else, uh, we need to practice a lot. And how do you get practiced? Redo the questions I am doing today, just two questions, but a lot of new concepts, new techniques. For example, reach your Spective method, prospective method, second amortization uh, method, go slow, go step by step. Okay, so after you do this example, then I pre recorded lecture, those lecture recording provide examples. Do the examples. Why doing the example? Because when you're stuck, you have detailed step by step solutions. And after those lectures, do the example in the textbook. Only after you do those three things, then you do the quiz. You should be fine. And you, do, you should be OK with the final exam. OK. Uh, any questions? Any questions? OK. So again, go slow, practice and practice. If you have questions, please email me after the class and please allow two business days for your email answered. Okay, that's all for this class. Remember the next two hours is to watch the lecture recordings by yourself. Okay, any last minute question?